Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Case 5 of GGS number 1. So, Mr. Nemi here, or Nemi Templar, has changed the statement, or added a statement. Sorry, there's a lot of ors today. But he added another statement talking about a business with someone with the Templar and Milverton. So, we're going to press that because who the heck is Milverton? <laughs> and what does this have to do with Mr. Cloudry? Um, what's this company-like thing you just mentioned? Just a cute little prank we played back when we were snot-nosed brats. Yep, it was a company that delivered fresh milk to everyone downtown. That sounds more like a business venture than a prank by some snot-nosed brats. Well, since I've got the chance, I might as well ask about something. About the company, about the company's name. Let's ask of oh the last one is never mind. Uh we're gonna ask about the company's name. This company of yours, you said it was a prank? Played by you you two and Cloudgrisan? Yeah, that's right. And you said it was called Milverton and Templar Dairy Company, right? Yeah, that's right. Who's this... Milverton person? Well, I'm glad you asked. Naturally, it's... Hold it right there! Don't go running your gobs, I'm... You're going to say you don't admit to these witnesses' statements, aren't you? Why? Did you only react to the name Milverton? Well... A lot was going on at this guy's place when we were little. Here comes the sweet, sweet bells of, or sugar of... I messed that up! But the truth is starting to leak out. <laughs> If a memory serves, his parents ended up getting divorced because they were so poor. That's when his surname changed to Cloudgray. Well, you'll always be a Milverton to us. Milverton? That was your name? Certainly not. I was born a Cloudgray. You mustn't trust a single word these two say. You hold a national qualification as a telegraph operator. When you received your qualifications, your personal history was investigated and recorded. It won't take us long to check that record. You realize that, yes? <coughs> it sounds as though we can trust these brothers' testimony. Your name was once Rupert Milberton. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Getting deeper in. Rupert Cloudgray was formerly Rupert Milverton. This might be game-changing information. Rupert Cloudgray, 27, an engineer at the City Telegraph office, formerly known as Rupert Milverton, childhood friend of the Templar Brothers. Whoo, boy! How many- how long are you gonna keep this up? <laughs> anyway, this is a pretty insane case we're mixed up in, huh? Theft of the Ministry of Justice National Correspondence. I still can't prove it, though. But there's no mistake about how much sense it makes. The transaction in the carriage two months ago. The breaking at the pawn shop two days ago. But the one who was making that deal with Mengadol wasn't Mr. Whitey over there, was it? Yeah, it was a mason named Morrison. He's dead now, though. Huh, if only they were linked somehow. Anyway, Cloudry's testimony is pretty solid, huh? Maybe the ones who hold the key to this cross-examination are... Those two brothers. Hold on a second. I don't have the full translation for this page anymore, but, um, I can... If you look on the second 
the second bullet point. If you one one uh underneath that, you can see Miru Burton. So this is what's gonna connect us. The name Wilburton comes up. The Thrice Baker um, Mortarson, I suppose it was. I'm assuming Mortar. Yeah, Mor uh, Mortarson is has last name is Milverton, I believe. And that's what we're gonna connect. How that's how we're gonna connect him to what happened two months ago. I'm sorry, I don't have the translation for that anymore. But it's like the name Milverton comes up in the Mega Doll case files, and that's how we're gonna do this. Oh, all right, let's do it. <laughs> We're on the third statement. We gotta present it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm having a moment where I'm forgetting what I'm doing here. Let's present the Mango Doll case file. Rupert Milverton, son. Why didn't you tell me about that name? I've already thrown away that name. There was no need for me to bring it up. I'm afraid that's not true. You had... a reason for hiding that name. Just give it up, man! Well, what reason would that be? These are the case files from two months ago. The victim, whose failed transaction with Mangodal ended in his death. I believe his name was Mr. Mortar the Mason, was it not? His full name is recorded in this file. Mortar Milverton. Milverton, you say? It, it can't be. Rupert Milverton, son. Mr. Mortar the Mason was your father, was he not? Well... As I stated previously, when you received your qualifications, your personal history was investigated and recorded. It could be incredibly easy for us to look it up. I advise you not to forget that. <sighs> you stole top secret correspondence from Great Britain. And worked with your father to make a deal with Mangadol! <laughs> Got you cornered. How are you gonna get out of this, Sonny? The facts that have become clear through this cross-examination, and the clues we've seen, if you connect the dots between them, we begin to see the truth. Th the truth, you say. You and your father, Mr. Mortar, had dealings with Mr. Mangadol. By dealings? Naturally, you mean this music box, correct? They stole information from the Ministry of Justice's top secret correspondence and tried to sell it to Mr. Mangadol. The music box and the disc. Two of them. The reason for its unusual form is... Likely a precaution for the event that it would fall into someone else's hands. No one would ever guess that such information would be recorded on a music box after all. But the transaction failed, and Mr. Mortar was murdered. Mr. Mangodal was arrested, and the stolen disc was held at the pawn shop. And then, two days ago, you came to Hatchton's shop to recover it. But your recovery attempt also ended in failure, it would seem. One of the discs was confiscated by the police, and the other one was never found. That's why, that night, you joined forces with the Templar Brothers and snuck into the pawn shop. In order to recover the other disc once and for all. That disc was inside this box. Seriously? We have never heard anything about that. On the night of the murder, There are signs that the intruder touched this music box and nothing else. We learned that when it stood out in 3D from the two photos. And why did you touch the music box? 
the reason is, of course, to recover the other disc that had been left inside. If that found its way into the hands of the police, your treason against your country would have been discovered. Well, Cloud Grisan, everything began two months ago. I have no intention of admitting to your wild accusations. Oh shit, his arm, his arm is bleeding. Oh, how long are we gonna keep this up, Cloudry? How much longer? I swear. Okay, I swear. I think as much as I enjoy this case, I feel like I'm doing another round of uh, the fifth case of Ace Attorney Investigation 1. And that took a long time because the stupid tree man didn't want to admit to his thing and kept coming up with more shit. This is exactly what's happening right now. Well, Grison. Your arm seems to be bleeding. Like, how many videos already are we on this? This is like, like on this case already. What? Ah! Uh. Two nights ago, at the scene of the crime, at Hatshan's shop, there were three bullets fired. One of them robbed Hatshan's of his life. One hit Mr. Holmes's pouch. And the last one. After wounding the intruder's arm, hit this calendar at the crime scene. Klaugrisan, the wound in your arm was from when you were shot that night, wasn't it? I don't think you can run anymore. You the just better admit it. Honestly. No matter what happens, keep me a secret until the bitter end. That was my condition when I handed over the money. It seems that it really was wrong of me to trust a pair of downtown small-time crooks. Very well, I admit it. I snuck into Mr. Hatch's shop that night. After paying these two crooks ten guineas. As you can see, I sustained this wound but to my arm at that time. However, that's all I admit to. As for stealing top secret correspondence from the Ministry of Justice, or conducting transactions with Mr. Mangodal. I swear before God that I had nothing to do with any of it. I guess as long as I don't have evidence, he won't admit it, huh? But I believe this proves the most important fact. What fact would that be, exchange student? Two of the pistols used that night were already discovered. Each of them fired one bullet. The bullet fired by the Templar brothers, brothers hit Mr. Holmes' pouch. The bullet fired by Mr. Hatch's pistol, naturally, was the one that grazed Klaugrisan's arm. That's the one thing that makes sense. Well... I suppose he couldn't very well have shot himself there, could he? If those things are true, then there can be only one conclusion. The only one who could have fired the third bullet, which killed Hatchson, was... The third intruder who was present at the scene of the crime. <gasps> oh. Yes, that is you, Cloud Grisan. <laughs> no one but you could possibly have shot Hatsan. I'm sorry. His his voice sounds kind of like Hosanaga. <laughs> <laughs> You've committed quite a blunder, Mr. Attorney, by discovering me. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? It's true. I was at the pawn shop at that time, and... I had attempted to hide that it's only natural. 
I... I had attempted to hide that. It's only natural, is it not? As an outstanding telegraph operator, I could allow such a blank... a black mark on my record. But have you not considered... C considered Considered what? The possibility that I may have seen the critical moment. In other words, I... will be the eyewitness that puts the final nail in your client's coffin. What? Uh, don't tell me you... Naturally, that night, I saw it clearly. The very moment that the pickpocket girl shot that poor old shopkeep. Uh, eh? Order, order, order. It seems that this trial is finding arriving at its grand finale. Is it? Witness, Rupert Clowgry. Yes. Surely you must be well aware that if there were any falsehoods in your statement just now, that in and of itself will be proof of your crime. Yes, of course. Now then, the court will hear your testimony about the scene you witnessed the moment the victim was shot. As you wish. Oh boy, this guy doesn't know when to quit. Is this really the last state testimony though? Witnessing the moment of the crime. When these two had their confrontation in the shopkeep, I was near the shop's entrance. When the shop sent Nem when the shopkeep sent Nemi flying, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I hurried after the shopkeep and peered into the room through the small window in the door. The defendant, on her back in her black coat, shot the victim, had his back to her, trying to flee. I clearly saw the blood from the shopkeep's back splatter on the defendant's coat. The defendant tried to dispose of the pistol through the small window, so I picked it up and ran. What? Holy shit! He brought in the coat and everything, and we can't prove it wrong because there is blood on the coat. Fuck. Uh, well, what was the meaning of that testimony? Look at that smirk. You say you witnessed the very moment the defendant committed her crime? Order, order, order. I had no intention of giving such a testimony, but... I couldn't allow the blame for a murder I didn't commit to fall on me. It was self-defense, self so to speak, that caused me to state the facts. Bullshit. Facts, you say. All of this is news to the prosecution as well. Uh, my deepest apologies. The shopkeep who shot me in the arm was in turn shot in the back by the pickpocket and killed. Naturally, the blacks, the back splattered must. Naturally, the back splattered must have occurred then. The victim's blood splattered on the defendant's coat. You're sure of this? Yes, I'm certain. It was the black coat that filthy little pickpocket was wearing on the day of the murder. What? If there really are blood traces on it, that would be decisive evidence. It should be possible to find out with that investigative method. Eh? Uh? Recently, a German scientist developed some new technology to test human blood. Completely unlike that dodgy chemical made by a certain suspicious detective. Holmesy's theories are real! They're not dodgy! Real proof is scientific. Mere theories are useless. Okay, but theories lead to proof. Uh, uh, real theory- Theories lead to scienti uh, scientific discoveries, okay? 
This technology has already been successfully used as evidence in German trials. We have some of that region at the yard, if your honor will permit it. We would be able to check the defendant's coat immediately. Hmm. This isn't good, not old Kuhn. Huh? Think about it. Obviously there's blood on Genie's coat. If they test it now... They can only test blood, but they can't identify where the blood is? Uh, oh, I see. Yesterday at the detention center. Right, here we go. Don't move, Genie. It wasn't Hatch-san's blood. It was from two months ago. From when Mangadol stabbed Mr. Mortar, wearing that coat. Your Honor, the defense objects to this investigative means. Overruled. Lord Von Zeeks, conduct the investigation with the greatest of haste. As you wish. During that time, the defense will conduct its cross-examination. That... If that blood is found on the coat, Gina-san will be... Defense! Ha uh, yes, Your Honor. Your cross-examination. Understood. This cross-examination. It doesn't yield some definitive clues. I've got a really bad feeling about this. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I guess I'll press everything. And that'll probably be it, because we're getting close to the 30 minute mark here. Ah, uh, witness in the mode of the crime. Alright, you bastard. Hatsan came out of the storeroom at the back of the shop, correct? These two were ransacking the counter and he flew at them in a frenzy. He had a pistol in his hand. I was fortunate not to have been nearby. I've never been so scared in my whole life! We may have been thieves, but it wasn't time to remedy. But you had a pistol in your hand. That makes it armed robbery. So, what did you mean when you said you were near the entrance? I was gazing at the wide array of items arranged on the shelves near the entrance. He must have been searching the unredeemed pod items for the music box. Then the shopkeep came flying at Nemi. Tully came to his aid, making it two against one, so they should have been able to overpower him easily. But they couldn't. I was trying to help Nemi, but I got pinned down on the counter. That's when I pointed the pistol at him, and the old bloke finally ran for it! Ah, uh, the two of you teaming up against that poor, weak pawn shop holder was awfully unfair. <sighs> so then that's when you claim to have been shot. Yes, I wasn't paying attention just for a moment there. The three of them wrestling around, knocking everything off the desk, and it made a loud noise. That was right when it happened, so I didn't even hear the gunshot. And the bullet struck the calendar hanging on the wall behind you, correct? It must have done. When I looked at my arm, it was bleeding. I wrapped it up as best I could with a handkerchief, but... I couldn't very well go to a doctor. So all I could do was wait for the room to close on its own. I figured the bleeding would have stopped after two days, though. Was Mr. Hatch aiming for you when he fired? Who can say? I doubt he noticed me, though. The gun must have misfired, because the bullet missed. When I pointed that pistol at the old man, he sent me flying! Then... He turned and ran for the door in the back. 
So, what did you do, witness? You chased Hatsan when he ran. I'm not sure myself why I did it, but I ran toward the back of the shop. What do you mean by the small window in the door? The storeroom door is made of very solid, heavy wood. But there is indeed a small window through which one can peer into the room. Come to think of it, I looked through the I looked through there that night myself. What about those mismatched brothers? Did they not look through the small window? D -d -d don't be absurd! Of course we didn't! They likely didn't even know of the existence of that small window. He's got a point. Those brothers didn't end up seeing the crime. Hmm. Inside the storeroom was the shopkeep, who had run for cover and that girl, standing there. You mean, the defendant? Those two didn't seem to notice me peeking in. The girl was pointing the pistol in her hand at the shopkeep. What did you see after that? This is so full of bullshit, but how are we gonna prove this? As I recall, when the murder was discovered, the defendant was holding the pistol. That pistol belonged to Mr. Hatch, and it fired no more than a single bullet. The only one who could have shot Hatsan was you, Klaugrisan. The pistol the pickpocket had at the time was not the shopkeep's. There was the shopkeep's pistol. There was the shopkeep's pistol that shot me. The Templar's pistol shot the detective. It was neither of those two, but a third pistol. As long as it was not the shopkeep's pistol, naturally it would have to mean that there was a third pistol. Okay, I guess Borok had another line and it wasn't there. Uh, his other line was, and that would have to mean that the defendant had prepared her own pistol beforehand. But there was no third pistol discovered at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself, Mr. Attorney. What? These things have an order to them. I shall explain in due time. The shopkeep and the girl appear to be glaring at each other. But suddenly the shopkeep tried to run. As soon as he did that, the girl shot him in the back. What? What is the meaning of this? Full of bullshit, that's what it is, Judge. The blood splattered. I saw the very moment through the small window. The coat is black, so you likely can't see it now, but... It was sullied with the shopkeep's blood. It's true. The coat does have bloodstains on it. But those weren't made by Mr. Old Mr. Hatch's blood. Right. It was Mr. Moore's blood from when Mengadol stabbed him two months ago. Mumsy's chemical can clearly prove that. But unless the court accepts it, it can't be used as evidence. Ugh. That's just frustrating. What? She tried to... through the window? Wasn't the freaking? Wait, how? Oh wait, she just it through the window. <laughs> Once the shopkeep had fallen, the pickpocket walked this way. By this way, you mean... Toward the storeroom door. I was looking through the small window, after all. I hurriedly moved away from the door. When I did that... She pushed his pistol through the window, onto this side of the door. Well, why would she...? I don't know. I suppose she wanted to dispose of the weapon. 
I, unthinkably, picked up the pistol and stuffed it into my own pocket. I thought that if I left it there, something else might happen. So, you carried the third pistol off from the crime scene. Where is it? Yes, that's what happened. Hmm. Then, leaving those two to the tidying up, I departed from the pawn shop. T tidying up? Clean up the mess around the desk. He ordered us around like he was our mother. It was the least you could do for what I paid you. Ugh. Valgri san, when you left the shop, you had in your pocket the second disc. Isn't that right? You certainly are persistent, aren't you? Whoa! Gregson, what are you doing? Stop, stop, stop! A moment, please, you two. <sighs> <laughs> what the heck? Oh, something you wanted. No, no, no! Just now, you two were having a pretty intense fight, were you not? Oh, this detective's another. What seems to be the trouble? He just suddenly grabbed my lapels and started shouting! Why didn't you tell the police about the third pistol or some such? And why didn't you tell them? Well, we didn't know! Didn't even see that little window! My apologies. I lost myself for a moment there. Not hurt, are you? Ooh. There's no humor in his eyes! This detective, he's scary! I wonder why. I feel like there's something here. For Detective Gregson to suddenly lose control and grab him like that. You're right. Gregson is usually... smiling, no matter what I say. Well, I can't help feeling there are some circumstances behind that. Anyway, there's just something unnatural about it. E yeah. Your Honor! Please postpone this cross examination! What is it, Bailiff? I have the results of the investigation you ordered earlier. You mean the blood stain on the defendant's coat? Very well. The cross-examination is temporarily postponed. No objections, defense? No. I understand. Welp! This is gonna get really, really bad soon. But we have to stop here and continue in the next video because we are out of time. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys then. I was trying to help Nemi. Oh, and then I forgot my line. Damn it. You're going to say you don't admit to these witnesses' statements, aren't you? Why? Did you only react to the name Milverton? Well... A lot was going on at this guy's place when we were little. Here comes the sweet, sweet bells of, or sugar of... I've messed that up! But the truth is starting to leak out. <laughs> If a memory serves, his parents ended up getting divorced.
Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Case 5 of GGS number 1. So, Mr. Nemi here, or Nemi Templar, has changed the statement, or added a statement. Sorry, there's a lot of ors today. But he added another statement talking about a business with someone with the Templar and Milverton. So, we're going to press that because who the heck is Milverton? <laughs> and what does this have to do with Mr. Cloudry? It's because they were so poor. That's when his surname changed to Cloud Gray. Well, you'll always be a Milverton to us. Milverton. That was your name? Certainly not. I was born a Cloud Gray. You mustn't trust a single word these two say. You hold a national qualification as a telegraph operator. When you received your qualifications, your personal history was investigated and recorded. And well, Tech. Um, what's this company like thing you just mentioned? Just a cute little prank we played back when we were snot nosed brats. Yep, it was a company that delivered fresh milk to everyone downtown. That sounds more like a business venture than a prank by some snot-nosed brats. Well, since I've got the chance, I might as well ask about something. About the company... About the company's name. Let's ask of. Oh, the last one is never mind. Uh, we're gonna ask about the company's name. This company of yours... You said it was a prank? Played by you, you two and Cloudgrisson? Yeah, that's right. And you said it was called Milverton and Templar Dairy Company, right? Yeah, that's right. Who's this... Milverton person? Well, I'm glad you asked. Naturally, it's... Hold it right there! Don't go running your gobs, I'm 